This is, if this is the substitution, right? That gets me this triangle, right? Everybody with me there? You see you get the triangle? But if we have this triangle, then what can I do? I can say, well, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, right? Cosine is what? Jason over hypotenuse, good. Um, now, I'm actually interested in sine x and cosine x. How do I, how do I relate those to the half of x? I use the, the, these double angle formulas, right? Like sine of 2 theta is 2 sine cosine. Um, cosine of 2 theta is 2 cosine squared theta minus 1, right? So if we look at sine of 2 theta and we put theta equal to x over 2, that gives us sine of x. But sine of x is 2 sine x over 2 cosine x over 2. But hey, that's this times that, right? So that leaves me with 2u over 1 plus u squared, right? Conversely, if I look at cosine of 2 theta, that's cosine of x, which gives me um, 2 over 1 plus u squared minus 1. You make a common denominator and simplify, you get cosine of x is 1 minus u squared over 1 plus u squared. And let's see here, the other tool we need in the toolbox is this, the differential. If I take du, I get secant squared x over 2 dx, right? But that's 1 over cosine squared, which by the way is 1 over 1 plus u squared. And so that gives us du is 1 plus u squared dx. Solve for dx, you get dx is du over 1 plus u squared. So these four boxes, I mean really these three boxes, this dx, the cosine, the sine, these are like fun, these are our fundamental building blocks for the Weierstrass substitution. Now, why, why is this interesting? Here, I'll, I'll do the example in the book. I, if you want to um, watch the end of the earlier section, you can see what happens if you just make up an example here. <laughs> <coughs> I had square roots. It was it was unpleasant. So I, I, I'm going to um, take my medicine and follow the book here. Let's see here. So here it is. The point is just to um, give you an example which doesn't involve too much ugly arithmetic, really. Three sine of x. Not that we're not that there's anything wrong with that. I mean. Don't, don't, we, we do some ugly arithmetic in here, that much is true. All right, so there, there's the integral we want to do. There's some hope of doing this sort of integral by the appropriate massage of trigonometric identities, but the Weierstrass substitution is a pretty, pretty ironclad method for doing it because that Weierstrass substitution converts this to a rational function in U and then we're good to go. So what is that? Using the Weierstrass substitution, this is what the integral of dx is what? du over 1 plus u squared, right? And then I have th um, 3 times 2 is 6u over 1 plus u squared for sine. And then minus 4 times 1 minus u squared over 1 plus u squared for the cosine. So using the Weierstrass substitution. Which of course is built over what? X, excuse me, uh, u equals what? Tangent of x over 2. Everything's built over that, all right. And again, that, that over there where we worked about. So for your homework problems, I don't expect you to rework that board over there. You can just refer to the Weierstrass substitution. I mean, you should declare at least that u equals tangent of x over 2. But the fact that from that follows those identities for sine and cosine, you're free to just quote for these problems. OK? How do I simplify this? I mean, it's a rational function, but it's rather ugly. It's rather inelegantly written at the moment. Can you fix it? Right, D multiply the top and the bottom by 1 plus u squared, right? Clear out those denominators. So I've got du upstairs, and downstairs I've got what? I've got 6u minus 4 plus 4u squared, right? 
I'll take it a step more. I'm going to factor out a half. And I've got du over 2u squared plus 3u minus 2. Now we haven't faced a um, we haven't faced a quadratic quite like this before. Like most of our examples, the coefficient of the leading term in the denominator has been one. It's been, we've looked at monic polynomials in, in the in the in the denominator. I think this factors though. I mean that's kind of the whole point of using the book example. So, yeah. How does this work? Let's do a little algebra. Two u squared plus three u minus two. I think I can do this, 2u times something, u times something. Now, what is the, um, what, do, what do we have here for, um, I mean, hopefully 2 and minus 1, right? I want a plus 3, so a moment's reflection will show you I should put a plus 2 over here because that gives me a 4. And then if I put the minus 1 here, I'm good to go because I got 4 minus 1, which is 3. <coughs> Factoring. OK, so yeah. So for this problem, I think the partial fractions we want to look at is what? Like um, what would be convenient for us would be something like this. We could do something like a over 2u minus 1 plus b over u minus 2. That would be a, a convenient thing to try. What happens then? So I'm just, uh, you know, you'd be like, well, that's not your partial fractions. There's a 2 next to the u. Fine, you caught me. I'm just saying, I think this is going to work. Let's try it. I mean, it either works or it doesn't, right? I mean, you can make a guess for what the pattern is, and then you work it out. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, then we can go back and factor out the 2 and Deal with all those ugly fractions, but let's not do that if we can get away with it. Yeah. Oh, plus two. Thank you. I'm trying to do the same as this. Okay, so then we get what? One is equal to a times u plus two plus b times two u minus one, and I'll call this thing Pac-Man. We'll let we'll feed Pac-Man minus two. Pac-Man eating minus 2 gives us 1 is equal to minus 5b. So b is minus 1 fifth. What else do we want to feed Pac-Man? He's hungry. Feed me. One half, yes. That would be delicious. 1 is, but that makes this go away, right? And this leaves us with 1 half plus 2, otherwise known as 5 halves. So therefore, b, excuse me, a, good grief, a is equal to 2 fifths. Lo and behold, this is actually taking into account that half, right? What is it? I'll leave the half out front. Let me not try to do too much at once. So a is uh, 2 fifths, 1 over 2u minus 1, plus what? Um, oh, minus, rather, minus 1 fifth, 1 over u plus 2, du. Let me see if I can clean that up a little bit. So we have 1 fifth, the integral of du over 2u minus 1, minus 1 tenth, the integral of du over u plus 2. Both of these are done by a, let's say, w substitution, right? The first one, I make a w equals to what? Call this thing w, right? Over here, I'll call that thing w. So dw is 2 du. That gives me an extra factor of a half. So I get 1 tenth the natural log of the um, absolute value of 2u two, um, two minus 1, minus 1 tenth the natural log of the absolute value of u plus 2, plus a constant. 
using those W substitutions. And then finally, um, the, the, the finishing move here would be to put back what? This, right? I mean, th there's probably more we can do past this to make it prettier, but I'm tired. Um, <laughs> to be frank, here's <laughs> was one tenth. Natural hog the absolute value of two times the tangent of x over two minus one minus one tenth the natural log of the absolute value of tangent of x over two plus two close the absolute value plus a constant and there you go. I do think that that answer could be simplified in view of the various identities that exist over there and, pro and, and properties of the natural log. Yep. Oh, this one. That's because dw is 2, 2, 2 du, so du is actually w over 2, so the 1 fifth becomes a 1 tenth and the w substitution there. There's, there's one other kind of example um, in, that, in this section. I'll just write it. I'm not going to work it out yet. But um, the other kind of example would be something like this. We'll do this one next time. Integral of, and then we'll do the, we'll do this, and then we'll we'll get into the numerical integration probably. So that's the other kind of thing we can do. You make a u equals to um, the square root of one plus e to the x substitution, and that will convert that to a rational function. <coughs> so what I'm telling you is that's most of this section. What I have to tell you about there is done. Tomorrow I'll do one more example and then we'll talk about numerical integration. I give a pretty quick and dirty presentation for numerical integration. I don't really have much to say there. Um, and then we still have a couple days for what? Questions. Questions. Yes. So. Thanks guys. <laughs>